can't find it. So, please, I just want to play. Hi everybody, and welcome back to episode number two. And what are we playing? Home. That's right, home. So let's continue on, shall we? Oh, dear lord. Oh, what is this? There was a damp smelling plank leaning against the stale door. I might have been able to cross the river with it. Did I take it? Well, we already crossed the river, so... Yeah, we already waded through it in the last... Yeah. Video. Yeah. I left the plank where it was. Perhaps just wading through that river would be safer. Well, that's what we did. So, oops. My bad. And I think that's it. Yep. Alright. So, we figured out what happened to these poor girls. They died. So. Don't know by who. We don't know by who. And there seems to be something going on with a train ticket. I had finally found the exit. Once I left, I knew I never wanted to return there. The forest started to thin out a bit, and through the woods I could make out parts of the town beyond in the first hint of light. The mysteries of that forest were behind me, but I could still feel them on my neck like a warm breath. Those girls I had found, someone had taken them from their campsite and had murdered them. Was it the same person who had left that odd notebook? I was even more eager to get somewhere safe and to find a way to reach Rachel. Very interesting footsteps. Yeah. Interesting uh, sound, sound effects indeed. As I stepped through the gate, I suddenly recognized the auto park factory where I had worked as a machinist for all those years. The plant had closed almost three years ago. Now, times were better then. I thought I could hear a faint rustling behind me. Maybe it was just the wind. I found the body of a security guard just doing his job, no doubt. His face was covered with blood from some kind of head wound. I wondered, was this flashlight his? Dun, dun, dun. Dug into the ground was a cracked old watch. First my wallet and now this. Did I retrieve my watch? The watch was useless, but I put it on my wrist anyway. Stop it. One of the lockers hung open. Its contents were tossed around like someone had been looking for someone. The doors locked shut. And something about an electric box, a sign, danger, called for repair. So, boy. There was a large power box with five lights on it. Cables burst out of the box, snaking off to other parts of the factory. The metal was starting to wear, and the cobwebs collected on the, on the corners. The box wasn't receiving power. The door was locked tight. It seemed to be connected to the power box beside it. Alright, so now we need to look for the power stuff. Upstairs we go! Every part of this plant smelled old and rotted. I noticed the old bulletin board on the wall. Our old break table, the layer of dust and grime, only made seeing this sting more. Uh, the board contained yellowed clippings of newspapers, cartoons, and notices. There were notes two in front of the guys that worked here. One of them went to Norman, who was one of the older guys on the line. Hmm, a power panel looked like it was shut off. Did I push the switch? And it looks like we're pushing the switch again. The open locker was stuffed with dirty work, clothes, and old boots. There was a photo of a woman taped to the inside. But it was scratched out and the face was unrecognizable. Oh look, another power panel. 
it was shut tight. There was a rusty looking card slot on the side. Alright, looks like we're done here. Next! Uh, this was Norman Walker. The door was dented like somebody had pumped it. I don't remember him doing that when we worked there. Oh look, another panel that I hope could get me power back. Utility shelf crammed with mismatch tools and items. There was a claw hammer on the shelf. Did I take the hammer? As I took the hammer, I noticed it wasn't as rusty as the rest of the dusty. tools and the dusty as the rest of the tools on the shelf. The locker was complete mess hidden at the bottom though, was a m magnetic card. Did I take the card? Of course you did. I threw up the key card into my pocket. Another panel that I hope could help me get the power back on. Oh, gotta push it again. Oh, still not. There it is. Another panel that I hope could help me get the power back on. Pushed it again. Oh, yeah. We need one more. One more. I struck with the hammer. The old wooden board came apart easily after I had removed the plank. I left the hammer on the board. This was my locker in the factory. It stank of boo. There was a picture of Rachel on the inside. It it looked like it had been torn up. I thought I had taken that picture home when the factory closed. There was a mess of empty booze bottles. I wondered if that man in the house had something to do with it. He sure had a lot of alcohol on his plate. Make sure it was a man in the house. Working again, the door was unlocked. Did I go through a court today? I put the hand door and kept it. The rack of flashlights hung on the wall. One of them was missing. The stale scent of the old factory gave way to the brisk odor of pine trees and dirt. I was back outside, though I wasn't sure if that was better or worse. The path beyond was gone my flashlight barely illuminated anything. I wondered if it had really been taken from the factory. If so, how did I get it? That poor guard. He was probably just doing his job. Maybe he knew what was going on in the boarded up room. If he did, he wouldn't be telling that tale to anybody. I hope the past went back into town. I need to find some help. A rusty old truck had carneed, careened off the road and into the guardrail. Its front was crushed and its windows had all smashed. Judging by the rust, it had been there a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The garbage bin was a disgusting mess of rotten food and slick black bags. I saw a thin, greenish corner poking out from one of the bags. It was my driver's license. It looked damaged. Did I take it back? Of course not. I cleaned the card off as the best as I could. It looked pretty beat up. I was amazed to have found my credit card and now this. I tucked the card into my wallet next to find my credit card. Next to my credit card. You should have had your credit card. Yeah. It sounded like it was going to start raining again. 
I had entered Norman's place, this was back of the store that he ran, it was utterly quiet, except for the faint sound of a television. What the hell? One of Rachel's old autumn coats hung on a rack. What was Norman's bedroom? Wait, that was Norman's bedroom, wasn't it? What was that doing there? We're not gonna put the gun back. Could you put the gun back? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we're gonna keep it. And like I said, we're gonna get a different ending, damn it. The TV still flickered from this spectacle channel. Oh no, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Norman, my co worker, and one of the few friends I had in this town lay dead is beside his arm chair. His face and shirt were covered in blood. It looked like he'd been shot trying to get up. His eyes were wide with shock, though they were already drying. Norman, what was Rachel doing here? Why did you have a coat? Norman, maybe you deserve better. You probably did. Did I close his eyes? I closed his eyelids down, shuddering as I did so. I wasn't sure if I wanted to give him peace or if it was just... I couldn't stand to think any more about what was going on. I guess this was Norman's kitchen table. He kept it clean enough, but there were water rings from two cups still there. The kitchen trash bin smelled fresh. I didn't dig through that mess. I, I found a hairpin amongst the rotten food and trash and pocketed it. I used the hairpin to pick the lock. The hairpin snapped in half, so I threw it away. The general store was small, but it was clean. It had the usual things. Postcards, snacks, magazines, and canned goods. I never went there much. Rachel usually stopped by after work if we needed anything. The register was mostly empty, and a fat stack of travel magazines sat beside it. Ice cream, that's pretty much no good. Postcards. Nothing useful to really talk about. Uh, what had I seen? Norman was dead, but I had no idea why. I didn't know he could be involved in all of this. But the thought of him lying on the floor up there was sickening. The only comfort I had was the gun I still carried. But was it really a comfort or a curse? The rain was coming down hard, but at least I was close to home. It wouldn't be long before I got my answers. <clears throat> the gate was locked tight. One of his house, pretty much. One of his house, okay. Neighborhood, the local post box, the letter was sticking out as if someone hadn't pushed it all the way in. I knew it wasn't right, but did I look the letter? There was no return address, but the envelope was addressed to Norman. Carefully, I tore it open and looked at the letter inside. It read, Stay away. She's mine. That was it. No signature, no other information. Had the wrong gate. This one was wrong. Oh, man. I had entered our backyard. The rain gave me a terrible sense of four by Odin. Boy. Boy, and, and it chilled me through my clothes. I was expecting, but also afraid. I held my breath as I approached my hour back door. I was terrified to step in. The house was painfully quiet. The only sound was my own breathing. Ragged and drained. I flipped the light switch by the door and the power was off. I remembered having breakfast here on this very table. Was that yesterday or sometime before? The door that we to the bedroom. Where did you put the damn key? I don't know. Where did you put the damn key? Oh look. Your couch I mean your chair is uh trampled over. 
right. Um, look where I go, we need a key. I had found the last missing piece from my wallet. The old photo of Rachel and I stared back at it. It reminded me of better time. It didn't make me feel terribly uncomfortable. Did I keep it anyway? I replaced the photo in my wallet feeling like I had got part of my life back. Still, the image made me uneasy. Why had I thrown it away? Our television I had purchased it before I knew I was going to lose my job. I felt pretty guilty about it afterward, but they, but by then it was too late. Inside were a few days worth of clothes, some toiletries, and a train ticket. Where was she planning to go? Our sink was needed to be replaced. One of the tabs always stuck, but I haven't got around to fixing it yet. We were lucky enough to get a house with one of those wonderful old cloth wooden back covers. <coughs> My laptop had been left on and only had a tiny bit of power left. On the screen was a website about the old water tower. There was a key in the top drawer of my desk. I, it, I pocketed the key. The door was stuck shut. There was no traffic. And I guess that's one of that, I guess. I unlocked the basement door. decorations in the box. The garbage bags were stuffed with old pink cans and supplies. There was a dirty old key here. Did I take the key? I took a small key and tried to remember what it unlocked. There were old coal, tools, and other things we obviously hadn't thrown out yet. I had to put this divider wall. I put up this divider wall last summer so we could create a separate room in the basement. I hadn't finished it yet, so the door was stuck and the drywall was purely installed. Purely installed. I might have been able to break through if I found something heavy enough. <laughs> the grimy key I had found in the basement unlocked. Looked like the room had been tossed around. The furniture was a mess. Did somebody break in here? There was an old crowbar on the floor. Did I need to take the crowbar? Yeah. You looked at the heavy crowbar. I appreciate it. <coughs> Did I break through the wall with the crowbar? What I need, I swung the crowbar at the wall. I smashed the hole large enough to step through. As I stepped through the broken wall, my breath caught in my throat. This was it. The bridge was down there. Was she okay? A filthy looking pile of rags had been dumped in the corner. The stink of them was awful and made my eyes water. I was terrified to even touch the pile to see what way within. 
but I knew I had to. I had to come this far. After all the searching, after all I had seen, when I woke up in the rag, did I finally find my radio? What did you put? What did you hit last time? Did you say yes or no? Yeah, I just got my friend. You did? Yeah. So we're gonna hit no. The rags were wet, matted, covered in dirt and grime, but inside that tattered mess was no sign of my beloved wife. Rachel wasn't there. I looked around in confusion trying to figure out what to do next. Was she, if she wasn't there, where was she? What had I been searching for this entire time? I remembered the look on Rachel's face when I came home, didn't I? Then the awful realization hit me right in the gut. I had been looking at this the wrong way, hadn't I? This is what you've been trying to tell me all along, isn't it? I couldn't find Rachel there, and I won't find her anywhere else, because she was never there at all, was she? I stumbled back upstairs, and the pain in my leg, just a dull ache now, and sat down in our, my bedroom. My mind was spinning, and the ache I felt before was near crippling. and finally I could no longer fight the exhaustion. And as I tried to grab hold of something that would make sense of this all, I must have drifted off. Oh man! You naughty birdie. I guess... I... I guess these books were all actually mine then. It was my wallet with its contents intact. Either I dropped that stuff or somebody else did. Maybe I was sleepwalking again or maybe somebody stole it from me. Norman store or that forest, the water tower. Was I at those places before? Yes. I didn't see how it could have happened any other way. I must have been the one to lose my wallet and its contents. But what does that mean? that I found in that house. Were those really his wife remained in those tunnels and turned away from so what did I think? Did the other man murder his wife and bury her in those tunnels? The sick bastard must have. What else did that mean? There were some questionable things in those tunnels. What else was he wrapped up in? that at least two of the names in the musty notebook might have been recent victims. Heather, Olivia, Ashley, and Cheryl. Iris, Daphne, and Holly, and Rose. Those poor girls that gone into the forest. I wondered what happened to the other names on the list or the ones scratched out on the desk in the wet tunnels. through those walkers and poking around the plant until it didn't quite add up. Was I the only one who had been going back to the locker or factory? No, somebody was using that locker room, but it was definitely wasn't me. I hadn't given up drinking, remember? The laptop was dead, but I found some notes and it was paper in the drawer where I had found a key. There was a yellow sticky note with an eight digit code. It looked like it might be for the same, but what kind of phrase would that have been? In the shards of that broken mirror, I can see now my face gaunt now, hollow and sickly and immensely troubled. What other illusions had I dreamed? 
dreamed up. What on earth truth were waiting to be exposed? And the dirty, faded glass I looked like nothing more than a faint shadow. I used to tell myself that Rich was the one who wanted to keep the bath. Then what about him? Did I kill him? I I must have, but why? Did we fight or was I tricked into thinking he was sneaking around with well with Rachel? Damn it, what was happening to me? I had that old TV for so long I don't know if I could ever replace it. Like I had seen all there was, maybe I thought I was ready to go back into the basement. Maybe there shouldn't be anything for me to find, but I had to take one last one. The wall was cracked and pitted. I was told by an inspector the basement had been partially filled in before I bought the house. But by the look of that wall, I was going to need to fix the foundation. Come to think of it, I didn't think I had even had guests on that. Oh, I may only want to cook on that one last time. Whoops, my bad people. I am so, so, so sorry. Oh, wait. If I wanted to end it, I could do it. I could do it with that gun. Did I pick it up again? What about carrying an anvil? But I wouldn't let it go, not again. Everything smelled musty and old down here. I sat down at the table and stared at my gun in my hand. It didn't seem so heavy this time. You showed me the truth. I wasn't sure there was any reason to keep going. So what do you think? Shouldn't I just end this misery? Since I had arrived in town, things had been difficult. Working in the plant, though, had been good for me. It kept me in line, gave me something to do, and helped me get away from my past. When the factory closed, everything changed. I guess that was when I had started sleepwalking, disappearing for hours at a time. Drinking was probably just a way to deal with that. It was almost as if I were trying to beat my brain at its own game. Things stopped making sense sometime after that, and my memories of what happened are still in flux. I suppose that was when Rachel came along. This night had been the worst of my entire life. Would it even be possible to bounce back from everything that had happened, everything I'd seen? You know, in a way, I almost wish I hadn't even woken up tonight. It would have spared me a lot of pain. That man I had found in the old house had killed his wife. I was sure of it. Just as sure as you killed mine. After making it out of those tunnels, I thought those sewers might feel safer. I was wrong. The security tape I had watched showed someone being attacked by what looked like two people. But who was it that was attacked? And what had I been doing at Norman Place or even at that old forest? It didn't look good, that's for sure. Had I been responsible for what had happened there? What did you think? Was I guilty or was I just mad? Just for a second though, think about something else. Think about those poor girls I had accidentally discovered in the old forest. The notebook I had found in those woods had names in it. Names I think I saw somewhere else before. It couldn't have been me behind that, could it? I would never do such a thing to a sweet, innocent people. I know what you're thinking. That factory, that room with all the bottles and the old locker. You think it was me going back there, don't you? Well, even you admitted it wasn't. So, how could you that be? No, someone else must have been going there. But think, who else could have done it? 
I had to catch my breath to take it all in. At each point until the factory things had only gotten worse. But then going to Norman's door, that's where the confusion and doubt started to set in. That's when my perspective on all this really started to change. But Norman, it was clearly I who had ended your life. Whether you were a miserable bastard and deserved it, or whether you were innocent, well, that will be for someone else to decide. Maybe you knew the truth what, that I only know. Now, understand, maybe that's why I came to you. But as painful as all of that was, oh no, I couldn't bear to think about it again. After all I had seen and done, finally coming home was supposed to be the end to this entire ordeal. I had no idea though that it was only the beginning. When I had first stepped through the kitchen door, the silence had been unnerving. But to think of that, I went through all of that completely unaware of what I would discover. Had I killed Norman, thinking that he and, well, that there was something going on, everything that I held dear and true was now spinning around me. I had nothing to ground me, nothing to give me purpose or even the faintest hope of reason. Without Rachel, without what I thought was Rachel, I was lost forever. The gun was heavy but felt right, felt correct in my hand and as I sat at that table, Rachel was dead, you know, and you killed her. She was real enough to me before you came along, but I guess this is what has to happen. After all, you are the one calling the shots around here. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. That was Home, a unique horror game. And that was some game commentary with Paul Oski and my other half, Tessa Baker. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. And as always, everybody, bye-bye. Stay scary.